Homeless. I'm passionate about justice. Bridge building. Affordable housing. I'm from San Francisco. Phoenix, Arizona. Lagos, Nigeria. I'm passionate about helping people. Those who don't have health insurance today. I'm very passionate about Shalom. Christian community development. That's what makes me pound the table every morning. I'm from Miami. Tuskegee Institute, Alabama. All over the world. Noel Castellanos, and I'm the CEO of the Christian Community Development Association. CCDA is an association of over 3,000 individuals, 500 organizations that are committed to working in under-resourced communities, loving the poor in the name of Jesus Christ. We're committed to three things, inspiring, training, and connecting Christians that want to get fully engaged in the work of restoring under-resourced communities. Here's what it is. I am. I am. I am. I am CCDA. CCDA. So when I'm teaching, I'm praying and hoping that the Holy Spirit would take these words and penetrate people's hearts. I will live. It's important for people who are working in urban ministry to be inspired because it's hard. There's not very many people that are willing to devote themselves to a life that to many would seem crazy. The good news is that we're not alone. We come together and we study the Word together and then we also see the effect of the Word in the lives of the people around us. People who are on drugs are now teaching, working, leaders, people who are prostitutes, uh, alcoholics, uh, families that were fragmented. It's just, so that's inspiring. We kind of bring the, the little sparks together and fan each other's fire. And we also get a sense that God is doing something big in the world right now. I come away inspired by the conference but mainly by the people who come together at the conference. CCDA's got all kinds of different teachers and speakers and people that have wisdom that comes from books and people that have wisdom that comes from the streets. Real peace means that nothing is missing and nothing is broken. Betterment versus development. If the church withdraws and we're in our four walls building our kingdom. If you look at the crime statistics, it looks like there's a lot of crime going on in the affordable housing in the neighborhood. The true story was... The training is just important. What's the next great youth ministry thing to, you know, talk about global warming? Here's a chance for a group of Christians to dialogue about it, fight about it, um, and laugh about it. I really enjoyed uh, what the speaker said. He says, uh, just because a person is charismatic, if they don't have any character, it can be catastrophic. What stood out to me the most has been being able to conversate with the older people, like the not so older people who've like done it already so we can see like what steps we need to take to get to where they are. You're not a leader just because you get all this knowledge, you go all to school and do all that. A leader is a person who enters into the agony and the pain of the people of that time. That's what makes a leader. So the issue is how do people leave here with not just speeches, which they don't remember, but they've got notebooks filled with specific, tangible tools. Very practical things. We don't necessarily know your community, but we're gonna hopefully give you some tools so that you can get to know or develop your community better. CCDA is a group of, this, of, of ministries that come together. We don't do ministry. Our ministry is bringing people together. It always happens where I'm in a room and somebody says, well, I'm in such and such a town. I'm in Washington, D.C., and I feel all alone. And in the same room, there's another person from Washington, D.C. We feel odd or strange or outside the box when we're in our own cities, but when we're here, we have family. I don't have to explain what I do to people a hundred times. I don't have to explain, well, Urban, what do you mean? Oh, you're doing this? You're working with kids? Like, I can't believe you're working with you. You're doing that. I'm. You're no longer an oddball or a weirdo. The relationships I developed in CCDA um, on a national basis have been some of the most important things to me. We're not talking about exchanging business cards, we're saying exchanging our lives. And I believe that God has used these relationships to strengthen my understanding of the gospel and what it means for me to live out the gospel in my context. And so it's more than just hugging and more than just saying, oh, I miss you and I'm so glad to see you. It's now let's get to business, let's get to work. And then there's plenty of space to eat together and sit and talk and stay up late and uh, you know have your kids play with each other. And it's a lot of fun. There's salsa dancing. 
Inspire, train, and connect. These are the three ways that we seek to serve our current and potential members all over the country. Through our annual conference where we gather over 3,000 individuals in one place. Through our regional training where we bring CCDA to you. And through our website where we offer resources online. Well, if you're interested in helping the poor, and to help themselves, CCDA is the place for you. If you're even thinking about it, it means that there's something that you have that we could use, and there's something that we have learned that we would be willing to share with you. We're sort of going, we're gonna stop complaining about the church we've experienced and work on becoming the church that we dream of, and not let the embarrassing things that we've seen done in the name of Christianity take us away from Christ. Throughout our nation, there are thousands of broken people and communities in need of transformation by the love of God. Instead of walking past these broken people and driving past these broken communities, it's time to get engaged. Te invito a ser parte de CCDA. I invite you to become a part of CCDA. Wasn't that wonderful? Yeah. It captures the, uh, the great experience that is our, our annual conference, and uh, it's exciting to be here in Cincinnati, and I want to tell you from the bottom of my heart um, how grateful I am that you entrust us with your time and your resources. I know it's not easy to get here. I, I, I was at uh, Starbucks getting ready for this morning, and uh, a young lady came up to me from uh, Canada, and I don't even, uh, it was uh, Ottawa or some, you know, I don't even know the states of the U.S. yet, okay? But uh, she said they took a bus, it broke down somewhere, you know, in the U.S., they rented two vans, they drove those vans here, they're gonna take those vans back, hope the bus is fixed so that they can take the bus back. I said, how many hours in total to get here? 30 hours, okay? Can, let, we better give them a little love, you know. Well, this morning, uh, I want to share my heart a little bit with you, but more importantly, I want to talk to you a little bit about the state of where CCDA is. And as the CEO, uh, uh, people look at CCDA, and one of the first things they say is, boy, you guys got a lot of leaders, you know? I mean, and we do. We have amazing board. It's, it's great leaders, and we have a chairman emeritus, our, our Moses, John Perkins, and man, it, um, how many of you are just blessed to hear John every morning, right? Thank you, John, for sharing your heart with us, and Vera May, and, and, and Wayne Gordon, who embodies and personifies what we want to see happen, along with Ann and Lawndale and their ministry, what we want to see happen all over the country. Not exact copies and duplicates, but that the principles that they embody that you would all take and say, man, how do we live this out ourselves? And, and then we have Dr. William Skinner. And so we have a lot of leaders and my job is simply to steward the vision of CCDA. It's not my vision. And in fact, it isn't even their vision alone. It is your vision. You are CCDA. That's what this video said. And, and I believe it's true that we're an association and we only will be able to do and accomplish what it is that God allows uh, or puts on your heart to do because we don't have the capacity to do all the things uh, to really seek God's kingdom and pursue kingdom priorities in a way that uh, we really believe we can make a difference in this country and this world. Well, I want to tell you today that I am more than ever convinced that the work that we do not just CCD work, but kingdom ministry, I believe, is more like a marathon than it is like a sprint. Okay? You, you know what I'm talking about? And uh, in the last four months, I've had the, uh, I was going to say privilege, but I, I've had the, uh, <laughs> the opportunity to run in two marathons. Okay? 
Uh, one of the great things that we're uh, experiencing here is we get to talk about both the victory and the, and the defeat, you know, the challenge of that. And, and uh, back in May, I had a chance to ride, run the uh, LA Marathon with my son, Noel Luis, who's a student out there in college. And uh, is there a picture of us up here? There we are. Uh, after we finish running the marathon, I'm not going to tell you my time. Don't even try to ask me. All I know is I got that medal and I finished, okay? And, uh, uh, and, but, you know, before you clap, don't, you know, before you clap, uh, just about a, a, now two weeks ago, I ran in the Chicago Marathon. I know there's a few of you that ran and finished, and I really am, am very envious of you. Uh, I... Uh, I knew that it was going to be a challenge for me to finish this one, and I hadn't, I was a little hurt after L.A., and I, I, I knew that uh, it may not, I may not make it with this old body, and, uh, but I get to mile uh, 18, and there's a Starbucks, and my wife and daughter are there, and my daughter runs after me, you know, to give me a high five, thinking she's going to encourage me for the next eight miles. Now, okay, eight more miles the last eight miles now you don't you don't understand do you okay and uh so what i did is i gave my daughter a hug and i, I told her honey i don't want to disappoint you but I, i'm gonna quit right here let's go home you know so i just you know i didn't even i mean if you if you know me uh i i i never hardly pass up an opportunity to go get a cup of coffee i didn't care about the coffee i said let's just go it hurt to have my socks on at that point, okay? So, it, it, uh, but here's a, here's a great verse that uh, I, I want to share that uh, really is my heart this morning. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. And listen to what it says. Therefore, since we're surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this, okay, now check this out. How do we do it, right? By keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Isn't that wonderful? Friends, we cannot do this in our own strength. The mountains are too big. The giants are too, you know, wicked and uh, mighty. The only way we can do what God has called us to do is to keep our eyes on Jesus and to allow him to do this through us. Now, here's a few things about running that marathon that I've learned about doing this as CCDA and doing it well. Number one one of the most exciting things about running a marathon is you're not alone. 50,000 people in Chicago, 35,000 people, and man, there's buzz, there's energy, and you're out there, and you know you're not, I mean, like, I knew I wasn't going to finish probably, but I was excited to run the race. Isn't this how you feel when you come here? I mean, you're not alone. Some of you have felt like there's nobody else that cares about the poor the way you do. Nobody else has this vision to not just do charity, but, um, but to do development and empower people. You don't want to do ministry for people. You want to do it with folks. And you're talking about it in a way that folks shake their head. What are you talking about? So we know we're not alone. And that's an exciting thing about a movement, about this giant, can they, you know, and maybe there's not millions, but there's enough people here to, start, to really fuel a movement around our world, around our country, in your city, in your neighborhood, so you're not alone. Number two, uh, in every marathon I've run, okay, <laughs> two, all right? <laughs> that sounds pretty good. In every marathon I've run. You know, you know what I've been struck by? It's intergenerational, okay? And in L.A., it is multicultural. The whole L.A. marathon was in the hood. Mariachi music and soul food and, you know, we didn't see any of those beautiful sights. Next year, you know, it's going to be different. They're going to go through Hollywood. But this year, it was all in the hood. I loved it. And, man, it was cool. And, and you know what? 
every color and every shade and every size and every age. For a while, I ran with these high school kids. And, and they were just trucking along, you know, and it was wonderful. And then there was one old guy from, you know, that actually is from Chicago. He says, this is my 50th marathon. He's 70 years old. That is a picture of CCDA. That's kingdom ministry. See, it's not that we, we put the elderly on the sidelines and say, now it's our job as young people to take over. We do it together. We, you know, we might be going a little slower now, but you know, I tell you what, they know where all the bumps and bruises are. They know where to turn and where not to go and when to slow down and, you know, when you need to pace yourself and when you need to, you know, go faster, when you need to replenish your strength. So don't you love that about this movement? I love it. I, I mean, I think it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a move of God. In Acts chapter 2, it, it says that, you know, your young men and young women are going to dream dreams, and the elderly are going to see visions. It is a movement that's intergenerational. We can't let that change. We got to continue to invite everybody to be a part of this movement because it takes all of us at every stage of our life to sustain the movement and to do this kingdom work. The next thing that uh, I, I'm struck by is that you cannot run the race described in Hebrews without training, right? You know what? There is, you, you could look the part, you could have the right suit on, you could be out there, you know, you're just ready to go and you look pretty good for a little while, but if you have not trained, you're not going to finish the race, right? That's why what we do here is so important. You got to train. If you're not training, you're not going to finish the race, and there are many of us that get to the place, I know, where we get too tired to train, right? And so we begin to let down our guard, and then we wonder why we don't finish well, right? You know what, I, and, and we, we say this to each other because we all know we're susceptible to this, right? And so I want to urge us... Uh, I, I know that we have to keep working on having workshops that are for everybody and, and you know, that make sure that if you're a 20-year veteran, you're not going to a 101 class. And maybe for you, we don't need a class where you're being taught more than you need a space where you can just talk and just learn from each other, right? And we got to work on that kind of deal. But we're committed to that. We're committed to that. And then finally, uh, you know what keeps us going? The joy of finishing. And John's been talking about finishing well. Uh, don't you want to finish like Dr. Perkins and, and Vera May, you know? I mean, we want to finish well. I mean, would you uh, imagine with me that when you're 80 years old, you're still coming to CCDA because you need it, because you're still doing ministry. You're still involved, right? So uh, I love this passage, and I just want to, you know, give that to you as a uh, a passage that I believe is uh, really important uh, for the movement. Now, the, ne the next part of my, just a few comments today, I just want to tell you a little bit about how we, uh, uh, as CCDA, I believe, we're kind of like that crowd at the marathon that's cheering you on. We're giving you the Gatorade and the bananas and the water, and we're giving you the, you know, the energy bars, because we know it's, it's hard. We know that you're, you know, uh, it's common, that at mile 20, you hit the wall. And it's like, man, I can't go on anymore. We're there to encourage you to say, let's go on, okay? So how do we do that? Well, I think the conference is a big part of that. Uh, how many of you have ever said, I want to uh, tell my friends to come to this conference, but I don't have the words. See that DVD that was up there? We got a bunch of copies out back. Take one with you. It's free. Take it, you know, and show it to everybody. And then if you don't get one today, uh, just email us and we'll send you one, okay? All right? So uh, that'll help you tell the story, right? The second thing uh, that I want to talk about, about for a second is this year uh, I've been in about 15 or 16 cities doing something called a CCDA cafe. Did anybody here attend a cafe this year? Raise your hand, would you? A few, a few, a couple over there, all right? All we do, here's, what we, here's kind of what we do. We said, we want to go to cities and just gather our friends and say, uh, how you doing? 
Uh, here's a little update about what CCDA is doing, but we want to hear from you, and we want to connect you, and we would just want to get together and, uh, uh, and then tell us how we can serve you better. Now, isn't that a good idea? Just to kind of gather folks, it, it's only going to take a couple hours. Uh, one place, uh, I'm going to give a shout out to Chattanooga. We had ribs, all right? You know, they went beyond coffee. We had ribs. It was wonderful. But uh, this year, it coming up in 210, here's what we want to do. Here's the idea, and I'm going to throw out the idea, but this is not an imposition on you. I want, I want your feedback, and then I want to say that you're free to do this or you're free not to do it, but here's what we'd love to do. We would love to do a CCDA cafe in 210 in every city we've ever done a, confer a national conference in. All right, so have you ever, is, are you here from one of those cities that hosted a national conference, right, over the last 20 years, right? So if you are interested in hosting a cafe, we want to reunite all the host team. We want to bring them together. We want to just do the same thing, uh, show a little love to you and say, man, we would not have gotten a year 20 if it wasn't for you. Thank you for allowing us to partner with you in your city to put on this national conference, right? So uh, in 210, there might be a cafe coming uh, to your city. Now, the next thing that we're thinking for 210 that I'm excited about, but again, this is going to be a partner-intensive deal if we can pull it off, all right? How many of you have ever said, I wish that some of my friends back home could experience the national conference, you know, but I know that they're not going to get on a plane and jump over here and pay the money to come over here. Anybody ever felt like that? Okay. So here's what we want to do. We want to have one-day regional conferences on a Saturday where uh, we will try to get either John or, or Coach or Mary, uh, Barbara, uh, uh, William Skinner, myself, some of the leaders of CCDA to come, maybe if, at least a couple of us, and then partner with some of the regional leaders and then offer a one-day deal that would cost $25, okay? And you just come and bring a couple hundred, 300, 400 people just to experience a taste of CCDA. What do you think about that? Okay. Now, the only way we can pull that off, though, and, and we've kind of tried to lay out regions of the country where we, you know, we feel like we need to grow the movement, and that's what you see in your book and up here. And so if you're from one of those places and you say, man, that is a bad idea because I don't know how we could do it next year, please don't feel pressured by that. We're not going to impose this on you, but we're, we want a conversation. And maybe there's another city here that says, oh, man, we're ready to do it. Talk to us. Because the idea is, that's the vision, is just to increase the visibility uh, and access to CCDA, okay? So uh, if you are interested, uh, send us an email. Give us your business card. We want to talk to you about that, regional conferences. Now, uh, the next thing I want to talk about is, the emerging leader cohort that maybe some of you have been here. John and the folks, come on up right now. I'm just going to tell you about it uh, quickly. But I think one of the most exciting things we're doing today is that we are investing in the under 40 leaders, okay? Not like, you know, not emerging, not in that they're, they're not already leaders, but they're emerging in their impact of our movement, right? And so we have started a program where for one or two years we're walking with a group of 20 leaders and we went to Jackson, Mississippi, we were in California and then we uh, came here and then we're going to be in Chicago uh, a little later next year but tremendous leaders and I'm going to have John Liotti who's uh, our board member that's been leading this I'm going to have him tell you about it. Good morning everybody. How you doing today? What an honor to be here up in front of you and just give an honor and respect to uh, Dr. Perkins and Mother Perkins and, and Coach and uh, all of our leaders. Uh, you know, this year has been an amazing year for us. Uh, last year we told you about this uh, Emerging Leaders Cohort Program that we developed. And uh, this is the product of some of those conversations. And uh, I'll let them do the talking because they're much more exciting to me. But we had three overarching goals I want to tell you about. The first is, is to develop relationships between each other. I think the hallmark of the early founders of this association was that they, uh, they loved each other and they walked together. And we want to start to create the context 
for those relationships with some of the emerging leaders and folks who are veterans in the community already. The second was we wanted to understand and be able to articulate the history of the movement. So one of the ways we did that was all of us traveled down to Jackson and spent a day with uh, Dr. Perkins, jumped on a bus and heard the stories firsthand and walked the streets of Mendenhall and it was a life-changing experience for us. And the third was is that there was a desire for us to accept the call, to hear the call of God to invest in this association, to invest in each other, and to really take the uh, responsibility and to begin to pick up the reins for bringing this, uh, this association to the next generation. And I really honor Noel for his leadership in this and uh, helping us put this together. Um, but I wanted to just have a couple, uh, a couple of these guys speak and just tell about their experience with us. Um, this is Chrissy Brooks. Give it up for Chrissy Brooks. You yeah. heard her yesterday. Uh, she is one of our newest board members and uh, has been journeying with us for, uh, for the last year with the cohort program. So, Chrissy, why don't you tell us how that's been for you? Well, I just first want to say we're missing a lot of our group, and I miss them right now. Um, so there's quite a few more of us. Uh, I think probably the most impact, impactful part of participating for me has been um, the relationships that we built with one another and just even coming here and being together and having the opportunity to teach together and do some things like that has been um, just really special and being able to understand on a deeper level uh, what the association was founded on has been really important to to sit for days with Dr. Perkins and to sit and hear um, Dr. Carlo talk about theology and and why we do the things that we do has um, just really built um, my own kind of just feeling of being compelled to, to go on in the ministry and also uh, just an understanding of how important it is that we all do this together in our nation. Great, thank you. Give it up for Chrissy, please. Yeah. And I, I, I wish I could have them all speak, but we have some time constraints. But I wanted to have uh, Esperanza Martinez from, uh, from Miami, from Florida, um, just uh, tell us a little bit about her, of her time. It's been amazing. I think that um, for me, I was probably one of those people who felt that I didn't fit in. Um, and just understanding what CCDA is about, I found a place where I belong. And I think that as Chrissy said, one of the greatest thing about being in this cohort has been able to forge friendships and networking with people across the country who feel like I feel, who understand me, or maybe don't understand me, but are willing to just sit with me and, um, and hear me out. I think that um, also just, um, Understanding that CCDA is very committed to having different people from different backgrounds, different uh, ministries, and different ways of doing CCDA uh, come on board. That is something that most organizations are not willing to do. And the fact that um, the old folks are really opening up the doors. Thank you, Dr. Perkins. We love them. And, and we're doing it together, that intergenerational part. Um, it, it's really important. So for me, that's been a wonderful place to be at and just getting to know people that um, I love. Yeah, so wonderful, that's great. So just for the sake of time, I would love for the rest of the cohort just to introduce yourselves and say that the city you're from and the ministry that you represent. Lanita Fix, Urban Youth Impact, West Palm Beach, Florida. Jenny Ingram from East Palo Alto, California with Northern California Urban Development. Eric Iverson, Youth Works. Be careful though if you join because they will give you work to do. Matthew Watson, serving at Living Hope Church in Memphis, Tennessee. All right. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. So there are, there are 18 of us who have journeyed together. And just to let you know, um, you all will have the opportunity to also participate in this. And we're going to have an informational gathering uh, at 1130 this afternoon in room 230 uh, to hear about, a little more about the cohort and how you can participate and, uh, or nominate someone to participate for the next year's cohort group. And again, I just want to honor our leaders for thinking forward and really being proactive to pass on the baton to the next generation. I think that's the mark of great leadership, amen? And uh, let's just honor them for that. Thank you. Yeah, I don't need a mic. Yeah. All right, give it up. A little love, a little love. Yeah. And uh, it, it is significant. Chrissy Brooks is our first board member out of that cohort, right? And that's already happened. And I know there's going to be many more. And so we're, we're very excited about that. Um, where this kind of the, the genesis and the birth of this is uh, not probably a couple years ago, we were at a board meeting and we're sitting around the table and somebody said, uh, how old were you when you came on the board of CCDA? 
and we started going around the circle and we realized that we were all in our late 20s, our early 30s, and we said, now who's the youngest board member here now? And it was, we, we maybe had one or two under 40, right? We said, boy, if this is going to be a sustainable movement, we're going to have to change. And so that's what uh, this commitment is all about, right? Isn't that great? Okay. Now, the other thing that is right along this deal last night after that great service, did you enjoy Bart Campolo and Alexia Salvatierra? You know, they kind of brought the uh, two extreme ends of uh, the solidarity thing. And boy, I'll tell you, both did a wonderful job. And we're so proud of both of them. And they ministered to us in amazing ways. But as soon as we're done, uh, Alexia and I went over to the youth intensive. Uh, if you want to go and peek second floor of the hotel, they have a big lounge there. If you need, you know, want to take a nap, some of you, you can go check out those big couches. They got couches, popcorn machine and everything, a ping pong table, and they're hanging out. But I tell you, a hundred kids, young people, and we just got to share our hearts with them. Friends, I believe that this youth intensive might be one of the most important things that we're doing because we are investing in the leaders of today that are going to lead you tomorrow, right? And so I tell you, take advantage of it. And you're going to hear more about it, but I, I just want you to know about this deal. So Stanley, I have a friend, Stanley Carlson Thies, that's going to come up in a second, so he's going to make his way up. But uh, this past year, I've had the privilege of serving on the uh, uh, President's Council for Faith and Neighborhood Partnerships, really representing CCDA. Isn't that great? Okay, and uh, I was in California in January watching the Super Bowl, and I got a phone call, and on the other line, somebody said, I'm calling from the White House. And so I, I was already thinking, you know, I'm, I'm going to hang up on them because it must have been a joke. But they said, we are calling to invite you to serve on the President's Council for Faith and Neighborhood Partnerships. And uh, they said, are you willing to do it? Well, first of all, I didn't know what that was, but I said, yes, of course I'll, I'll serve. You know, when the president calls, you know, you've got to say yes, right? Okay, well, uh, a lot of our work is focused around the idea of how do we help government work with neighborhood groups and faith-based groups so that there'd be a better partnership. Many of you are, even though you may not be getting a government grant directly to do housing or to do transitional kind of deals or addiction programs, many of you if you have a summer program and you get lunches from the city, you're getting government indirect funding, okay, or uh, a resource, or there's all kinds of thing, ways that we partner with government, uh, and it can be challenging, right? And we're trying to work out all the legalities and all the ways to make that more effective. Well, I've had the privilege of serving on a task force with Stanley, and Stanley's in Washington. He'll tell you about his organization, but he... Uh, has done a wonderful job of helping to clarify how it is that the church might be impacted by some of the things that are going on. So I'm going I'm to let him talk to you about that for a couple minutes, okay? Thank you, Brother Noel. Uh, apologize for the long notes and the wrong pants. You know, every time I come to CCDA, I am pumped up again because of your passion for serving Jesus. And that's important, you know, in D.C. there are a lot of passionate people, but only part of it is a passion for Jesus. There are other currents going on, and some of that is troubling, and I want you to think about what will you do if the government starts clamping down on your ministry's Jesus obedience and its Jesus identity. I think that's what we've got to start thinking about. So I'm glad to serve on this uh, task force with Noel. We're looking at the church-state rules. This is a third administration that's been thinking about how the government can work with faith groups. So that's encouraging, it's a sign of hope, but there are some troubling signs as well. And I wanna bring those to your attention. These church-state rules, like Noel said, it's not just about whether you get a government grant. It affects ministries that are licensed by government, that are credited, that take school lunch uh, provisions and all of that. So whether or not you take government grants, you can be affected by some negative trends that may be coming. So what are those trends? I see it as a cloud on the horizon. There are a lot of positive developments, but also some storms that may be coming, and we've got to be alert for those. You remember that President Obama on the campaign trail, he said he'd do the faith-based initiative again. That was great. 
And he said, we are going to restrict religious expression and we're going to restrict religious hiring. A lot of people said, wait a second, what's going on? Now, I want to tell you that nothing has changed so far. All the existing liberating rules are still in effect, developed during the Clinton years and the Bush years. So, so far, so good, but there are some stormy signs. Those faith-based rules that have been maintained have been maintained, I think, because of pragmatism rather than principle. We should thank the president for keeping them, but it's partly because a lot of faith groups went and told the administration, if you change those rules, we'll have to pull out of our partnerships and it'll be chaos in services. We don't want to do that, so please don't change the rules. So the rules have stayed the same, but you know, keeping the rules because of the consequences is not the same as standing up for full religious freedom in principle. So that's a troubling sign to me. And consider Congress. There are a lot of good folks there. They've got a lot of passion. But many powerful members consider religious hiring to be just bigotry. You know, they only hire members of their own party for their office. But when a Christian wants to hire, Christian ministry wants to hire just Christians, they think that's just discrimination. That is danger sign on the horizon. There are likely darker days ahead, I think, for faith-based organizations. It's not just about government money. Let me give you two examples. Employment Non-Discrimination Act is being talked about in Congress. It sounds good. We've got to protect everybody in employment. That's wonderful. But a consequence may be that a Christian ministry that wants to hire a staff that's biblically faithful in sexual matters may not be able to do that unless they build a stronger exemption into the bill that exists at the moment. And a bill that was just launched this last week may threaten the ability of Christian adoption agencies to insist that those kids go out to mother, father families. That's going to be very troubling for a lot of faith-based adoption. So I think there may be darker days ahead for faith-based services, and I think we shouldn't just wait for that to happen. We're fighting on the advisory council. And I think we ought to do three simple things. Let me suggest these to you. One of them is to become vocal. Tell the press and elected officials how your good works are the fruit of your faith, and they're not going to have the one unless they protect the other. A lot of people don't think that. They think that good works just come out of nowhere. Just tell them this is rooted in your faith. They've got to protect your faith. Secondly, I encourage you to take part in a webcast. It'll be in November to equip you to see some of these trends and what you can do about them. You'll hear about that webcast through different networks. And then third, I want to offer you a resource. Visit the website of the Institutional Religious Freedom Alliance to learn about some of these trends uh, through our free e-newsletter. Remember that, irfalliance.org. Um, it's Institutional Religious Freedom Alliance because we have to protect not only individual religious freedom, but also Christian and other faith institutions. Their faith identity, can they keep it? And their faith practices, will those be honored and accommodated by government? That's what we've got to watch for. So I say let's be hopeful, let's be prepared, let's be ready to take action. Thank you. Thank you, Stanley. You can take that mic. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, just be praying that uh, God would give the folks that are there uh, involved in this uh, great uh, wisdom and that we can have influence just by our life. Uh, probably if we really have the love and the light that John's been talking about, no matter where we are, that'll come through, right? W including in Washington. Okay, so uh, I want to ask uh, my wife Marianne to come on up here, and then I want to ask our staff to come on up here. And would you give them a hand? Uh, uh, the CCDA staff, and then my uh, my lovely wife Marianne, come on up, come on up. Uh, you might need to, you know, clap a little. Oh, are they come? Here they come. All right, <clears throat> come on. Uh, Yes, and yes. Now, first, I, I want to talk, uh, just tell you, or acknowledge, and uh, I think there's a picture of my family somewhere up here, but uh, you all know this. You cannot do this ministry without the support of your family or without the involvement of your family. And for, uh, for 25 years that we've been married, uh, Mary Ann has uh, been 
as committed or more committed than me to kingdom uh, ministry. And uh, as you know, um, this past year, I've been on the road a lot. And I've visited a lot of folks, and I've been a lot of places. And every time I'm there, it means that I'm not at home, okay? So I want you to uh, just to know how much it means to me that Marianne is here and supports the work that uh, God has called me to in CCDA. Amen. Thank you. Okay, and, um, and then I, I just ask that you be praying for us and our family. Our daughter, uh, Anna's at home. She's a junior in uh, high school. And then our two boys are away to college. So I, I would just uh, beg your prayers. And then I just want to uh, introduce our staff, okay? Uh, ben the man, okay, Garrett. Uh, he is our finance director. Would you give it up for Ben? Yeah. Dave Clark, we, we, you know, I told him he could choose any title he wanted, and he decided to call himself chief of staff, you know, in this kind of presidential. But you know what? Here's the thing about Dave. You don't know what he's going to be doing at any moment, okay? Uh, yesterday, I, we, we were sitting in the front, and we looked over here, and he was running that camera right there. And I'm thinking, oh, I didn't know you even knew how to run a camera. He does. <laughs> I hope that, I hope that uh, session is uh, videotaped okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Chris Like uh, is our kind of web communication person. Have you ever gotten an e-news or an e-restorer from us or some other notice bugging you about something? That comes from Chris. All right. And he can tell you whether you opened it or not. <laughs> so when you see... When you see a email from CCDA, you, you need to open it, all right? Okay? Otherwise, he's not going to have a job. Oh, no. And he's, he's newly married, all right? So, Ashley, don't worry. Yeah. Uh, what, what is it? Aaron Schultz. How many of you know that uh, this 21-year, uh, no, how old are you? Oh, 25-year-old. This young 25-year-old woman from Minnesota yeah, yeah. runs this conference. All right? <laughs> Take about it. Take about it. Um, so some of you, you know, young folks up there that have uh, been sitting on the sidelines, it's time to get up. Because, you know, all you need is the chance. And, you know, Erin uh, keeps pushing. And she's doing things that I would never even think about doing. And she's doing a great job, right? Okay, so thank you, Erin. And then, Salvador Ike Jimenez. Salvador is our graphic artist. How, how many of you enjoy all those things that you get in the booklets and the banners and all that? Sal's our graphic artist. And, uh, and I'm missing one staff person, and I, and I know he's just being rebellious, okay? But uh, he, I'll give him a chance to get up here. Uh, Stephanie Herrick is our registration director and our office manager. And would you give it up for Stephanie? Okay. And then uh, our newest staff person is Deanna Merched. And she's going to be working on all of our uh, website development, and a lot of things are coming with that. But she has a lot of great skill and talent, and we welcome Deanna Merced to our team. <laughs> Pamela Toussaint is our editor and writer. So that, did you like that e-restore, or the restore you got with John's picture and Shane's picture? And all those other things that we write. Uh, if there's ever a typo, it's because I didn't give it to Pam. All right, to check it out. So Pam Toussaint, thank you for uh, your work. And, uh, and then finally, Addie Anderson is, she programs, and I don't understand this, but she's the one that programs all the web stuff to make it work, and she sits at her computer a lot, and she's always smiling. That's a different kind of person. I, I, you know, I, I, so, uh, so, like, check this out. All the stuff that we want to see done and that we're talking about doing, this is a team that pulls it off and we couldn't do it without them. This is your staff, 
okay? So uh, we want to give them a great big hand, okay? Yeah. All right. And I got to tell you, it's a kind of a scary thing when you can honestly say, man, I really like all you guys. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's one thing to love them, right? Because, you know, you got to do that. But, man, to work with a team where you can say, dang, I, I kind of like you guys. It's kind of fun to hang out. Well, listen, uh, I hope you feel uh, encouraged about where we are as an association that God is at work doing something marvelous. And friends, we can't control it. All we can do is just try to nurture it and not get in the way and not impede what God wants to do. We are so excited for you to come to Chicago next year to celebrate 21. We're growing up. We're finally adults. All right? We're going to have, now we're gonna have a, an adult party in Chicago. All right? All right? And now, last thing I'm going to say is that many of you have come this year to receive, when you come to Chicago, you need to say, hey, I'm ready to lead a workshop. I'm ready to lead a networking session. I got an idea about this or that. Send it all to Aaron, all right? And be ready to have a great conference in Chicago next September. It's gonna be early. Be ready right after Labor Day. Take your vacation, come, and we're gonna have a great time. Father, we love you. And we commit CCDA to you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. God bless you.